I see a lot of people delivering every single photo they took at that shoot. Personally, I'm hard pressed to find a circumstance that I would deliver every single photo I took at a shoot. What's happening, everybody? So today I wanna to talk about something uh, I see all the time. Uh, a question I hear all the time, and it's something that I see a lot of passionate opinions about. Now today I'm gonna to give you my opinion, and I wanna preface this by saying this is just that, my opinion. If you do something differently and it works for you, by all means, keep it up. If someone has an opposing opinion to mine and uh, you like what they have to say, go with that advice. Today I'm just gonna tell you how I feel about this topic. And the topic is, how many photos should you deliver to your client? Let's start with the obvious and check that off the list. It's whatever you uh, contractually are obligated to give them. Uh, however you structure your, your price plans, your, your, your photography pricing, whatever falls within that that you agree to with that individual, that should be your starting point, right? So one of my most popular packages is uh, $250 for 20 to 30 minutes and three to six photos. I like giving myself wiggle room inside there. You never know what's gonna happen on a shoot. On the low end, I'm gonna give them three photos. On the high end, I'm gonna give them six photos. And that largely depends on how the shoot goes, how many times I hit that shutter button, and how good the quality of photos that come out of that shoot are. And we all know there's a lot of variables at play when you're actually doing these shoots. So like I said, I like to give myself that buffer between three and six. I see a lot of people delivering every single photo they took at that shoot. Now, personally, I'm hard pressed to find a circumstance that I would deliver every single photo I took at a shoot. I do a lot of test photos just to see what my exposure and stuff looks like during certain settings. So I might take five photos when I get to the location, even with the subject in the photo, just so I can get my settings right and see uh, how that shoot's gonna go with the settings that I have chosen. And I'll make adjustments depending on what I see when I take that photo. Now I know a lot of photographers, and you're gonna be hard pressed to find a photographer where every single time they hit that shutter button, they've got crystal clear focus on their subject. Some photographers are better than others, but if you go to a shoot and you take 60 photos, more than likely there's gonna be some photos in there that aren't perfectly sharp. More than likely there's gonna be some photos in there that aren't framed properly. Maybe you cut the hand off, maybe you cut the legs off, maybe you have something in the background you didn't like. My personal opinion on this is I only wanna deliver photos that are of the highest possible standard that I can achieve. Any photos that don't fall within that standard get pushed aside. So let's say someone buys that session for me, uh, 20 to 30 minutes, three to six photos. I show up on location, I start snapping away, I take 60 photos, um, I get back, I start editing, and 20 of them are of the best of quality. They're all in focused, framed right, they're just killer photos. From that point forward, I would make a proofing gallery with those 20 photos and let them choose their three to six out of those. Whatever they don't pick out of that 20, I will put up on my website and allow them to purchase them for an additional cost. I'm delivering what we were contracted for. And from that point, if they want those photos, they can buy them. They could buy coffee mugs, they could buy prints, they could buy digital downloads, they could buy canvas wraps. Shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried. Whatever they want to. I sell a lot of digital downloads. People just want the rights to use the photo and you can go online and you can buy those rights off of my website after I've delivered what I was contracted to give you. As far as the other 40 photos go, they don't really see the light of day. I keep most of them on an external hard drive just so I have them in case I need them, but 99% of the time I never even go back and there's photos in there I haven't touched in six months, nine months. There's photos that I haven't touched since I first imported and picked my good photos out of the bunch. They're just sitting there in folders. Why would I want photos that aren't of the highest possible standard that I can achieve out there speaking for me as a photographer? They aren't representative of my vision. They aren't representative of my artistry. They aren't representative of my skills as a photographer. Oftentimes, I'm just snapping away because I'm of the mindset that I'd rather have too much than too little, or ah, oh, this might be a good photo, I'm not quite sure, let me take it, and we'll see how it looks when I get it on the computer. 
And then, you know, there's some times where I'm out there, every single one of these is awesome, I get back and they're not. Um, you're gonna have those circumstances, especially in the digital era. It's not like we're shooting with film anymore where we have, you know, you better make sure this shot is killer because you only got X amount of shots per roll of film. We have 128 gigabyte memory cards that we can literally just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos. And there's sometimes where I do that. There's sometimes where I'm out shooting for fun during a local event where I'll take four or 500 actual photos. Out of that four or 500, 350 of them aren't photos that I'd be willing to use. So they go on my computer, pick the good ones, put them in a gallery, say, hey, everybody, come look at this gallery. If you see a photo you like, you have the opportunity to buy it. So let's bump over to the computer real quick. I wanna show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. So here we are in Lightroom. This is a session I did with my wife while I was testing some things out. This was on location in a local park. And here I took 66 photos. And you can see a lot of these photos I was just testing out. Overexposed, I always punch in and see how clear it is. You can see the photos kind of blurry. Underexposed, not very good focus. Again, not really in focus. This one was in focus, but you could see we had a problem with the light back here. A little too much. Same thing with this guy here. Great focus, focus was nailed, but again, just too much back here. There's quite a few like that. But you could see as I'm going through here, there's different reasons. This is a great, uh, great in focus, but our eyes are closed. There's a bunch of different reasons why I would not want these getting out. Now here's one that I actually used. Good focus, good lighting, good background. This is a photograph that I wouldn't mind getting out that I would attach my name to. Why would I deliver every single photo from this session when there's a variety of reasons that I actually shouldn't? So I go through and I five star every photo from a session that I like. Out of the 60 photos, there were four photos that I thought lived up to that standard. And aside from this video now, these are the only four that would ever see the light of day. So one of the reasons I only got four photos that day that I'm willing to use was because I was trying out something I had never done before. I was actually manually focusing these photos with a vintage lens. That's something I had not done. On top of that, I was working with my, uh, my daughter, who you can see in this photo here, who was three at the time, who was running around, you know, like three-year-olds do, and I was using an external flash. I would actually have liked to have gotten about eight, maybe 10 photos out of that 60 that were up to the standard that I wouldn't mind releasing. At that point, I would take all eight to 10 and I would put them in a proofing gallery. The client would pick their six and I would deliver the six photos that they actually purchased from me. I would put the additional four in my gallery on my website and allow them to actually go through and purchase those photos in the varying formats I discussed before if they wanted to or not. When people see my photos and see my name on social media, I want them to see the very best quality that I can possibly deliver. I don't want to compromise in that regard. This helps me get booked. If someone sees a photo of mine online and they think they can pop out their iPhone 12 and take that photo, why would they ever hire me? If they see a photo online where focus isn't quite right on somebody's face or the lighting looks wonky or the background is blown out, or you know, a variety of things that can possibly happen when you're taking these photos, I don't want them associating that with me. When people see my photos online, I want them to say, wow, that's a great photo. Look at that background. Look at that lighting. Uh, how did he do that? That's the kind of things I want people to say about my photography. That's why people will reach out to me and book me. So in my personal opinion, hold yourself to the highest possible standard you can. Only release photos that live up to that standard. Don't give every single photo from every single shoot you do. Don't offer to let them buy every single photo. Every single time those photos get out there, it's representative of you. It's representative of your vision, of your work as a photographer, of your artistry. That reflects you. Make that the highest possible standard you can. Thank you guys so much. The light is changing in here. Hopefully nothing got too wonky. It's an overcast day here in my, uh, in my hometown, so I have these big skylights above me, and I can see the shadow the clouds are casting on the uh, scene right now. Thank you guys very much. If you enjoy these types of videos, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I release a new video. Stay tuned, I got some great videos in the bullpen I will be releasing soon. Thank you again for watching, and we'll catch you next time.